Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over my mock draft 1.0. This is my first mock draft. Things are obviously going to change when we get back to draft time. But this is my first go at it. Still got some fun to watch. But I want to go ahead and give it a go. See what we got. This is post Senior Bowl. Senior Bowl just happened a couple of days ago. We're going to go ahead and get right in. Probably have a couple Senior Bowl guys show up. But now number one jumping right in Jacksonville Jaguars back on the clock after being the number one pick last year. Really, I think it's only a two horse race between Aiden Hutchinson and Evan Neal. If you hear Ekem Aquanu, that's a little bit over hypey for me. I don't think he's worth it. Thibodeau could be. I just think he's a lot more raw, whereas Aiden Hutchins is polished right out the gate. Now, personally for me, I would take Aiden Hutchinson right here because I think he's the best player in this draft. He's going to be good day one. He's going to be a great player. Evan Neal, you could go. If you really want to just protect Trevor Lawrence and make sure you get your investment out of Trevor Lawrence, yeah, you could go Evan Neal. That wouldn't be a bad pick. But for my money, Aiden Hutchinson is that guy. Now, number two, I don't see the Lions double dipping back in tackle. So we're going to go Kayvon Thibodeau, who I, I think he's, like I said, the difference between him and Hutchinson is they're both freaky dudes. I'm excited to see what Hutchinson does at the combine because supposedly there's been some guys from Michigan saying that his numbers are going to be crazy. Kayvon Thibodeau is going to be crazy. That dude has elite bend, one of the best get-offs in the draft. Well, I'd say probably the best get-off in the draft. But he's raw. He doesn't have a lot of moves, so you'll have to polish those. But if you're the Lions, I mean, that's definitely a great pick. His potential is insane. He was probably the number one pick for a while until Ian Hutchinson just dismantled Ohio State. That's kind of what flipped the tides. But number three is where it starts to get interesting with the Houston Texans because you could go Evan Neal. You traded two first-round picks for Laramie Tunzel. Um, and that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go Evan Neal. Now, you did, like I said, you trade two firsts for Laramie Tunzel, but you need help on that old line whether it's Davis Mills, whether it's Watson coming back, whether you draft a dude in the second round, whether you trade back up and get a dude in the first round. Whatever you do, you're going to need help. Evan Neal can play anywhere. He can play right tackle. He played at Bama. He can play guard. He played it at Bama. He's very versatile. He can play wherever, probably slipping at right tackle day one. You have a, one of the best tackle duos in the league. I think that's where you go. The other, I was thinking, you know, you could go Stingley. I'm, some people are falling on Stingley lately. I still think he's a generational prospect, but you could go Stingley or I like Hamilton, but I think three's a little rich for a safety in my books. But now we go number four, the New York Jets. This is where I take Derek Stingley. They need help on defense, especially their secondary. They get all the help they could get. And I mean, Derek Stingley was as a freshman would have been like the first corner off the board. His athleticism and tools are gonna they're gonna correlate directly to the NFL. He's gonna be great right when he steps on that field. He has great traits that we've seen from corners that translate well to the NFL. I still think he's that generational dude. Now I love Ahmad Gardner. I've heard some hype, but I I, I know like Dale Jeremiah. I think he puts Ahmad Gardner over Derek Stingley in his latest big board. I love Gardner. Trust me, that was my dude before this college football season. But I, I still don't see. I still think Stingley, for my money, is a top five pick, and I have him going four. I think that's a great pick. Now the New York Giants up at five. I'm gonna go Ikem Ekwanu. Um, there's a lot of debate between him and Charles Cross over who's gonna be that next tackle off the board. I like Ikem Ekwanu just because a little more versatility. He could play guard. He's a great run blocker. Giants need O line help. I think that's an easy fit. And then the Panthers come up pick six. This is like the easiest pick of the draft. Panthers take the next tackle. If two go, he, they take the next tackle. You need O line help. Um, the Panthers and Charles Cross is going to be a great tackle. He might be, if you're looking at just pure tackle prospects overall, Charles Cross might be over Ikem Aquanu. I just like the potential with Aquanu, and he could slide into guard if you have some tackles. That versatility I like personally if I'm the Giants there at five but you could flip those two picks and it'd still be great either order those two teams are getting alignment and the Giants are back up on the clock with pick seven they're gonna get two blue chip dudes as draft and here at pick seven this is where I have an interesting pick I am going a mod Gardner I think he is that dude in the draft I love you know We've seen press man corners are so highly coveted in the NFL. You've seen it with J.C. Horn. You've seen it with C.J. Henderson. I mean, these dudes go earlier than you think. And I think Ahmad Gardner is just that next guy. 
great press man corner, physical, didn't allow a touchdown, yada, yada. I mean, he's a stud. There's rumors that James Bradbury might ask out. I don't know if I believe those. But nonetheless, even if James Bradbury leaves, it's an obvious hole. But if even if he stays, you corner having two lockdown corners just makes your defense so much easier. You don't need to rely on a safety help as much, you know. Your pass rush has a little more time to get there. You can just build the defense so much easier around them. So I think you get your lockdown corner here at seven. Now pick eight. The Atlanta Falcons, this is where I get my dude in this draft, George Karloftis. They need edge help bad. They have no pass rush. This is where you get George Karloftis, who in my money is a top five or six player in the draft. I love what he did. You know, he came out as a true freshman and was bullying dudes in the Big Ten as a true freshman. And then has the COVID year. He gets a couple little injuries. He comes back this year, puts together a great year. He's grown a lot in the moves that he uses. His strength is great. He has great size for a defensive end. He could play 3-4 or 4-3 defensive end. I think he has a lot of versatility. But here for Atlanta, he probably slips in as a 4-3 defensive end. He can rush the pass or he can stop the run. I'm not saying his size, but the way he plays reminds me of Brandon Graham a little, where he gets a lot of pressures. He can get back there, but he also makes some huge plays in the run game. That's one thing with Brandon Graham that if you watch the Eagles a lot, Brandon Graham makes big plays in the run, and that's where he and gets a lot of pressures. And that's where the underrated aspect. I think that's part of what makes George Karloftis so great and why I like him. That's a great pick for eight. Now number nine, the Broncos is like one of the hardest picks I think right now because this is probably Aaron Rodgers. I if they're trading for Aaron Rodgers, this probably goes to Green Bay. But we're going to say that doesn't happen. You could go quarterback. I'm not a huge fan of any quarterback's top 10. So I think this could be a prime spot for a team to trade up um, to get into the top 10 and get, you know, if they want someone falls in love with Malik Willis, I think this is the spot to go trade up and get your guy. But if we're, we're doing no trades for this draft, I, mean, I, I don't know if I feel a quarterback for the Broncos here. I think you have to go try and get a veteran guy. Or just stick with Drew Locke or Teddy. I just, I just I don't like picking a developmental guy with the state of their roster. And then you would think the most obvious pick would be Devin Lloyd. But at the same time, nine is pretty high for a linebacker. You know, you look at Kyle Hamilton. I was talking to one of my friends, a Broncos fan. I mean, they would love Kyle Hamilton. I just, you already have Justin Simmons, who's like a top three paid safety. Picking Kyle Hamilton at nine is going to make him probably a top 10 paid safety in the NFL. And you're having two top 10 paid safeties on the same team. That's not a valuable enough position for me to be putting that much money. Plus, the defense wasn't really that much of an issue for the Broncos. I think you want to attack offense, but then at the same time, that puts you in the cage of where do I go? We're actually going to go defense, even though I would love offense. I just don't see the fit. We're going to go defense. and interesting. I'm going to go David Ajabo here. I think he's going to keep rising as the draft comes along. You know, this raw dude who has only played football for like two years. Coming from, I believe he comes from, he came over, moved over from France, played at Michigan. I mean, he's raw. He can go in there. He can play that 3-4 outside linebacker, kind of like that Von Miller, Bradley Chubb role, and just get another outside linebacker that can rush the passer. Now, they have some, um, they drafted some, I believe, Jonathan Cooper, his name, Ohio State guy who looked pretty good at the end of the season. But, like, you have a dude like David Ajabo. Like I said, I don't know. This is the hardest pick for me. But I'm just going to go David Ajabo, get him off the board, and move on. Pick 10, we have the New York Jets. This is where I, this is where I snatch Kyle Hamilton. They need help in their secondary. If you can get Stingley and Hamilton in the same draft, I mean, you're transforming that secondary from not a lot to something insane just overnight. That, that would be like the dream scenario for the Jets to get those two and just that secondary is a whole new animal. Now pick 11, we have the Washington Commanders. What a great name they came up with. You know, I'm glad they spent a whole year to come up with Commanders. But nonetheless, they're here at pick 11 with their all new logo. It's changed so much. You know, a whole different font for the W. But we're going to take my best quarterback off the board. They need quarterback. I'm going Sam Howell. He is my number one quarterback in this draft. I know people are falling in love with the traits of Malik Willis, the stats of Kenny Pickett, the arm of Corral, you know, the winning culture that Ritter brings, the strong arm from Carson Strong. For my money, Sam Howell, is he's one of the most underrated runners. I mean, if you want to see how good Sam Howell is at running, go turn on his tape against Miami. That dude's electric running he has a cannon I like this year that he didn't have 
great weapons and stuff like he did the year before. You know, he lost Diami Brown, Daz Newsome, Michael Carter, Javante Williams. He lost all those dudes, and he struggled. But I think that's good for him because he was forced to go through progressions more, make more difficult throws. He wasn't just throwing goal balls every time. For my money, Sam Howell is the best quarterback in this class, and I would pick him at pick 11 if I'm Washington. Now, pick 12, the Minnesota Vikings here, they definitely need edge but with how the edge board turns out, I think there's definitely a couple other first rounders in this edge class. I don't know if any of them are worth the 12th overall pick, though. They could definitely attack O line. Tyler Linderbaum is a guy you could look at here. Um, they could definitely. I don't think they would attack receiver. They could attack interior O line. Definitely, they could attack tackle. Just, the board falls out weird, but for my money, I'm gonna go corner. I'm gonna go Trent McDuffie. I think he's the third best corner. I, I think he's closer to Ahmad Gardner and Derek Stingley than he is to Andrew Booth, Kair Elam, Kyler Gordon, you know, Roger McCree. I'm not a huge Roger McCree fan, but I think he's closer to that top tier than he is that next tier. And you get yourself a corner like that, great. Beef up that secondary. He's a little bit shorter than some people like, but I think his arm length will be all right. He's, he's a great athlete. I mean, he was shut down, him and Kyler Gordon ball down in Washington. No one wanted to pass the ball. Now it's the Pac-12, but he's still a stud at what he did. Now pick 13, the Browns. I think this is the most obvious position need out of anyone in the draft. I think the Browns got to go receiver. They lost Odell, Jarvis Landry getting up there. Donovan People jones is good for like two contested catches a game. That's about it. So I'm going to go receiver. And now I'm going to go Drake London. He is most people's number one. Now, I have a hard time scouting Drake London because as an Eagles fan, I watch Drake London and I get J.J. Ortega Whiteside flashbacks and I know he's a lot better than J.J. Ortega Whiteside, but just that Pac-12 contested catch guy, he scares me honestly, but like I know tons of people that I, I trust and I value their opinions a lot in the draft community to have him as like a top 10 player in this draft. And so, you know, I'm going to trust them and go with Drake London here. He's not my number one guy, but I'm going to trust them. Go with Drake London. Get you a contested catch guy. He's a baller still. Get him at 13. Now, 14, the Ravens was another hard pick. And this is going to be my reach of the draft, I think. If I'm going to go with, you know, I, I'm not going to go with the reach of the draft. I'll save that for later. We're going to go corner here. And I'm going to go with my guy. I know people aren't as high. I'm going to go Kair Elam. I think, you know, if you're the Ravens, you look at what the Bucks did. You just keep attacking corner. I mean, that's the most valuable. That's the second, third most valuable position in the league, probably behind quarterback and edge. You just got to keep attacking that position. You have some depth. Just keep getting more depth. Kyrie Elam's one of my favorite guys. I loved him before this season. Had a little bit quiet season. Not bad, though. He played in the SEC and locked dudes down. He has, he's like stereotypical corner size from what you want. I don't know how fast he's going to run, but I like what I see from him. He has good instincts and. I'm just going to ball with him and uh, get that secondary even better. I wanted to go safety for them, but, you know, I was going to think about Jalen Petrie, the senior bowl hero, but it's too it's too early for Petrie. He's my number one safety probably, but it's even, even now that's still too early. Now we have my Philadelphia Eagles. We get two picks in a row now. I definitely, I'm going to take the first pick I think should be the most obvious if he's available, Devin Lloyd to the Eagles. I don't know if Howard Roseman will do it because he, for some reason, hates drafting linebackers, but Devin Lloyd is my number one linebacker. Nicobe Dean has some more size issues that kind of scare me. He's still going to be a first rounder, still going to be great. Scares me a little. I'd rather just take the more prototypical linebacker in Devin Lloyd who's going to be an animal. He's going to test off the charts. Everything, great size, great instincts, good in the pass, good in the run, Every, everything. I love everything about Devin Lloyd. Now, our next pick, we could pick quarterback here. I think we trade for a quarterback. But honestly, I feel like the Eagles might not. I feel like we should trade for a veteran quarterback. And so, therefore, we might not have some of these picks. I honestly don't think I would draft any of these dudes over Hurts, though. I wouldn't be upset. If, if on draft day, I hear it for the 16th overall pick in the 22 NFL draft, the Eagles select Malik Willis, I'm not going to be upset. I think that would still be a good pick. But right here, we're going to go elsewhere, and we are going to go receiver. Where If we want to help Jalen Hurts, now I think we should get a receiver 
in free agency or trade. I think Ridley and Godwin, you should get a guy like that, especially for keeping Hurts. We saw what a guy like Diggs can do to Josh Allen and just kind of change that. Get yourself a dude like Godwin or Ridley through either trade or signing Godwin. And that's why I go, but I'm a draft receiver here to say we don't do that. And my guy is Garrett Wilson. I think he's just the most natural separator. And that's what I love about receivers. I like separators. And Garrett Wilson is just a separator, man. He gets space. He's not the fastest. He's not the biggest. But he gets space. He gets open. He knows how to play the receiver position, kind of like Devontae Smith. And those two would be a nasty pair in Philadelphia. Now, we have the Los Angeles Chargers. A lot of people love Jordan Davis, but you haven't seen my last pick. I am never picking Jordan Davis in any of my mock drafts in protest of the college football awards because I don't think he deserved to be the best defensive player in the country. They're, that I think that was just absurd. So we're not going in that direction. Instead, we're going receiver. We're getting him the beast in Traylon Burks. I just, especially if Mike Williams leaves, he kind of replaces that Mike Williams, you know, big, fast, contested catch. He'll get balls down the field. He can catch it underneath. And he's almost like an A.J. Brown after the catch a little. I mean, he's just an animal. Get him in there pairing with Justin Herbert. That would be a fun duo, him and Keenan Allen. This is honestly if Mike Williams leaves. If Mike Williams stays, you could still go receiver, but I would look more towards Olave or Williams and get that just pure speedster. But if Mike Williams leaves, I'm getting Traylon Burks to replace him. And now the Saints, this is my favorite fit in the NFL draft. I'm going to have the Saints going Desmond Ritter. I think Ritter's... Arguably probably the third best quarterback in my eyes. I have Malik Willis probably as my second best quarterback behind Howell. But Ritter's that pro-ready. I think he'll come in day one and be good. He's accurate, has a good arm, has all the traits you would want. He's a lot less of a prospect than Malik Willis. And that's what the Saints want. I think that's what the Saints need. They have a good roster with some players getting on their second deals. Go ahead and get a guy with Ritter who can slide in day one and make your team good right out the gate. Now pick 19, the Philadelphia Eagles are back up. I like Linderbaum here, and I like Edge, though. I, the Eagles, I don't see any way the Eagles go out of this draft without picking either O-line or D-line there. Getting a lineman, I'm going to go D-line, and I'm going to get Jermaine Johnson, the senior bowl standout. He's just technically sound. You know, he's not, like, the most explosive dude, but he just, he knows how to win. He's a good D-end. 19 maybe a little early, but I think he's definitely a first-rounder. He balled out at the Senior Bowl. He deserves to be a first-rounder. And here we go, the Eagles. Howie Roseman is like a kid finding the cookie jar right now. He sees all this D-line, O-line talent, and there is no way he's leaving the first round without one of those positions. All right, moving on to pick 20, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers, who I have picking another quarterback. We're going to go Malik Willis. You know, Mike Tomlin had his eye on him, probably just like everyone else did at the Senior Bowl. But Malik Willis is the potential. I mean, the dude's like, he's, he's like arguably the most elusive dude in this draft, if I include running backs. Like, he's, we saw it in the Senior Bowl game. We saw the arm during the practices just ripping through any conditions, especially in Pittsburgh. You're going to need to do that. There's going to be some wind, some rain. He's, and he's going to be able to do that. He's got a strong arm. He would have thrown in any condition. He's an insane runner. I, I mean, they need to get a quarterback, and I think Malik Willis is their dude. Now, I hate that, you know, everyone always gets mad, you know, in the mock draft community saying, you know, they we need to be done with the same school comps, you know, comp dudes to the people in the same school. But, yeah, everyone thinks it's okay to just do same city mocks. I don't think Kenny Pickett is honestly the guy for the Steelers. Could he be? Yeah, maybe, but I would go Malik Willis and Matt Corral over Kenny Pickett if I'm them. So, that's my opinion. You know, small hand pick it. He, he's going to have to go later in the draft. 21, we're going to go with the New England Patriots. Another, just like the Browns, I think they obviously have to go receiver. And for them, I'm going to go Jamison Williams. Get yourself a dynamic dude. Start, stop, speed is insane. I think the thing that separates him is how fast he can get up to speed and change his speed within routes to get open is like the most special ability about him. He has that top speed, yes. But it's that that start stop and the ability to change speed so fast that gets him that separation. And I think he would be great in there. Pair him with Mac Jones, give him another weapon. That's just absolute speedster. And we're actually going to go, we have the Las Vegas Raiders up next. We're going to go same position. We're going to go Chris Olave for Las Vegas Raiders. 
Obviously, they lost their speedster. Get yourself another speedster. Their receiver group is pretty weak with Hunter Renfro, Zay Jones, Deshaun Jackson. I mean, you need to get a new youth guy in there to pair with Hunter Renfro. Get Chris Olave, another speedster. Can replace that deep threat. He's probably going to run really fast in the 40. Get him right there for the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, pick 23. The Cardinals are up. And for my money... I'm just getting the best O-lineman available. Tyler Linderbaum, he's the best player available at the board. Um, slide him in there. He probably could play guard. I don't even know who their center is. But he could play guard if you do have a center you like. I don't think they have a great center. But maybe they do. I'm just not even thinking about it. But Tyler Linderbaum, I think that's honestly a crime that he fell to 23. I guess center is just not the most valuable position. You can just – it's really not. I still think that's a great pick. Now, pick 24 – for the Cowboys, I like, you know, I like tackle here. Um, I like Bernard Raymond, Trevor Penning's all right. You could go interior O line, but for my money, I'm gonna get one of the biggest dudes who won, I think, from the Super Bowl and one of the Super Bowl Senior Bowl, and one of the dudes I love. We're gonna go interior D line, and we're gonna go Devontae Wyatt from Georgia. He can play that three tech. He's an explosive athlete. Some of the quickest feet in the draft. I love what he does. He'll come in there and he'll help up that pass rush. He can play some in the run game too. Buff up that D-line. They, they still have Lawrence Parsons. You know They probably will lose Randy Gregory to free agency. Get yourself some help on that D-line. Now pick 25, the Buffalo Bills here. The Buffalo Bills, for my money, they need to attack corner. We saw their corners kind of struggle once Tredavious White went out. I'm going to go Andrew Booth. He has all the tools you want. Struggled up a little bit at Clemson. I'm a little lower on him than some people are. But I think he's still a good prospect. Go ahead and get Andrew Booth. You need that other corner to pair with Tredavious White. Keep building up that defense. Josh Allen will make special things happen on offense. Keep building up that defense to help help that offense. I mean, you gave up a touchdown in 16 seconds or 13 seconds to Patrick Mahomes. You need to be able to cover somebody. Now that's partly on defensive coordinator. I'm not going to get into that. But... Get yourself some help on defense. Now, 26, the Titans. I have one of my favorite fits of the draft here. I think Bernard Raymond, I would take over Trevor Penning if I'm looking at tackle. But just the th- I'm going to take Trevor Penning because just the thought of his nastiness with, like, Derrick Henry behind him, Taylor Lewan on that offensive line. I mean, that's a nasty group on offense. And they're just going to – they can just bully kids. I would – Love to see Penning and Lawan on the same O-line with Derrick Henry running behind him. I don't know who would not want to see that. That's one of my favorite fits. That's where we're going for the Titans. Now, 27, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are up on the clock. And I wanted to go receiver because I definitely think they need to replace. Because I think Chris Godwin's going to leave. You have Mike Evans still, but other than that. But there's no receivers I really have a first-round grade on out here. I don't think J- Jahan Dotson ultimately slides into the first round. So you could end up going, uh, I don't like interior D-line. You could keep buffing up the O-line. Um, definitely, Nicobe Dean would be the pick here if Levante David ends up not coming back. Um, but I, I think he will. And you could lose some corners into free agency. So you, actually, you know, I'm gonna go Roger McCreary because he can slide in in that slot role and play that some press out of the slot. And uh, you don't know your they they're the team that's always attacked corner, gotten depth. That's what you keep doing. You saw they've gotten hurt. They struggled in their secondary a little. Get Roger McCreary, beef up that secondary, play that slot press corner right out the gate and be good. And that's really what you want. Now pick 28. The Green Bay Packers here. I'm going to do this assuming they keep Aaron Rodgers. Um, you, they're definitely not going to get him a receiver as much as they th- probably should. Corner, definitely not. I, you know what? This is where I'm going to go Jalen Petrie here for them. I think you just they, you got two good corners. Get Jalen Petrie, guy who can play. But I love he's, he's a smaller guy, but he'll blast dudes in the run game. He can play he can play man covers on tight ends and running backs will get up in their face. Great job at the senior bowl. He can play really everywhere. And I think that's kind of what Green Bay could use right now. So I think Jalen Petrie would be a really interesting addition in that Packers defense. So we're gonna go him. Now pick 29, the Dolphins. 
This was another one that was hard for me, but we're going to go to Kobe Dean. I think he's just best player available kind of at this point. I'm actually surprised he fell to 29, but he's just a gadget player. You play him everywhere. They'll find a role for him in Miami, and you, you just you just got to hope you can use him. That's the part I'm kind of scared about is like with that if the fact that he's smaller, you got to use him right. And so I hope he goes to a team that can use him right. Now pick 30, the Chiefs, they're going back up to the edge class, and they're going to go – one of the dudes I, I I start I fell in love with him at the Senior Bowl, and then Daniel Jeremiah has been hyping up, making me even more hype about him. I'm gonna go Boye Mafe from Minnesota. He's just an explosive dude off the edge. He balled out at the Senior Bowl. This edge class is deep, and Boye Mafe is one of those dudes that's just an absolute stud. I think he's gonna cement himself in the first round. And that that's kind of weird. the fact that. I think these three, Cameron Thomas, Maje Sanders, and Kingsley Nagbury are all first round picks, but I just haven't I don't I don't find a space for that many edge, but like this edge class is stacked. I like I said, I think these three could all be first round picks. Arnold Evan I haven't even watched yet, so he might be good too. But for my money, Boy Mafe is an animal. And I'm getting him at 30 for the Chiefs. 31 of the Bengals, you're taking best O line available. And for me, that's Bernard Raymond. I think He's, he's a freak. I've seen a lot of good comps. Lane Johnson's his comp. You know, he came over from Austria, I want to say. He played tight end, then moved to tackle. Hasn't played too much tackle. I think he only played a year. I think he only played a year at tackle, maybe two. He was prototypical six seven three something. I don't know how much exactly he weighs, but prototypical dude. Big, beastly guy. Get yourself a tackle. I think that's an easy pick. For the Bengals now, we're going to pick 32. We have the Lions back up on the board. This is where I take a quarterback up on the Lions, do what the Ravens traded up to do in the 2018 class for Lamar Jackson, get that quarterback with the fifth-year option. And it's your picking between Pickett and Corral. Personally, I like Corral just because he has the traits more than Pickett. Pickett, I mean, I know the hand size thing is a little bit overblown. The fact that they didn't measure his hands. He's weird double jointed with a thumb coming out forward. There's some weird stuff going on with that dude's hands. I, this isn't a podcast where we talk about hands. It's not a kinky podcast. But I just think Corral has better talent. And Pickett was up and down. I mean, he was great in the Senior Bowl game. But if you actually watch that game, he had um, Christian Watson, the North Dakota State receiver, wide open for a touchdown, underthrows him by about 10 yards. And, yes, it's still a completion that's good, but he underthrew that awfully. He has to wear a glove to grip the ball. And like If he measures his hands what people think, he would have the smallest hands of any starting quarterback in the NFL. Like it, it, We're getting in uncharted territory. It's not like it's like there's like, oh, it's a little bit overblown, but I, I, personally, I just like Matt Corral a little better. And that's going to be my first round mock draft. Let me know what you guys thought. I'm going to start trying to get into some more deeper mock drafts in the second and third rounds soon. I'm not ready to do the seven round mock drafts yet. I still need to watch more players. I probably after the combine, I'll get into more team seven round mock drafts. We should keep the content coming. More mock drafts. Let me know what you guys thought about this. What picks you would change. Keep love. You know, all that jazz in the comments. And I will see you guys for the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy the Super Bowl. Uh, I guess I'll give my quick Super Bowl pick. I think the Bengals are going to get absolutely destroyed on their offensive line. Get this quick pick. Andrew Aaron Donald's going to have like four sacks. That interior O line is not going to be able to handle him, and it's going to be a low scoring game. Everyone's taking the over. Trust me, I'm taking the under. I can't bet, so I'm not betting the under. But I would take the under. I think it's going to be a little bit of a struggle game for both teams, and I'm taking the Rams in the end. Some along the lines of twenty to. 20 to 16. There's my final pick. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.